It's hard to imagine Samsung's latest multi-thousand dollar phone looking like this one. It's missing the entire folding display, having been ripped from the phone, snapping all its cables in the process. But fear not, the seller insists it was removed by a licensed technician, a qualification that doesn't exist. You can be a licensed electrician or plumber, but there's no such thing as a licensed phone technician. And if there was, I'm sure they'd know this wasn't the way to remove the screen. It appears as though the seller has decided to take the repair into his own hands, only to make things worse. Not sure why, as the phone apparently still has 18 months of warranty left. But with a lie so blatantly obvious, I just had to buy it. After all, the rest of the phone looks to be in good condition. I won the auction for 181 Australian dollars. That's more than $2,000 less than a new Galaxy Fold 4. It came packaged quite poorly, with the box having opened up during transit. Inside is the Samsung case with S Pen, the Galaxy Fold 4, along with some accessories for that S Pen, and a USB-C cable. Upon connection of the charger, the phone shows no signs of life. I connected an amp meter in series with the phone to find it only drawing 75 milliamps. I'm hoping the absent display is triggering a protection mechanism of some kind and preventing the phone from powering on. But we'll have to see. To repair this Galaxy Fold, we'll of course need a new display and adhesive. Unlike the so-called licensed technician thought, the screen replacement comes attached to a new frame and hinge. We'll only need to transfer the necessary components over to our new assembly. After a quick heat on the heat mat to soften the adhesive, it's time to begin opening up each half. Starting with the back, it's a similar process to other Samsung phones. Using a suction cup, I can lift up the glass just enough to insert a plastic pick, which can be used to separate the remaining adhesive around the perimeter. Lifting up the back glass, we get our first look inside the Galaxy Z Fold 4. But there's still one half to go. I'm under the assumption this display still works, so I need to be careful when removing it and keep it intact. Unlike the back glass, its adhesive appears to be unaffected by heat, just like the Pixel 7a I took apart recently. As it turns out, this display is using the same method of attachment. I still don't know for sure what this stuff is, but some comments suggest a heat resistant gasket similar to what they may use in car engines. Like the Pixel 7a, the only point of entry was through the earpiece, carefully sliding my metal tool under and along the top edge of the screen. Once I had an opening, it was back to the plastic picks. Once I had three sides free, I thought I'd just be able to slowly fold open the screen to release the last side. However, this adhesive is so strong, I thought I might crack the glass so I continued prying using the pick. With the screen finally loose, I could proceed with detaching its flex cable. The plastic bracket securing the cable required quite a bit of prying to get free. The display did incur a slight amount of damage to one of its corners. I'll fold this copper foil back as best I can. I only hope this doesn't cause any functional damage to this screen. With that, we have our first complete look inside the Galaxy Fold 4. I've repaired a few Galaxy Flip devices, but never a Fold, so this is new territory for me. Starting with the left hand side, I'll begin removing the wireless charging coil, which is secured with 7 Phillips head screws. With it out of the way, I'll detach the first of two batteries. Before removing anything else, I'll proceed to the other side of the fold and unplug the other battery. One screw is a different shape and size than the others, so it's important we keep track of them. This is also a good time to remove the SIM card tray, so that we don't forget it later on. Down at the lower section, I can remove the speaker. It's very well clipped into place, but there's a small arrow pointing to a hole where you can pry. However, you may also find prying in other spots work well also. It's a similar story for the plastic on the other side. With the top level plastic pieces removed, it's time we dig deeper. I'll unplug the flex cables attaching to the motherboard before we unfasten its three screws. After which the motherboard can be lifted free from the phone. This motherboard is packing a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus 
12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Back inside the phone, we can remove the charge port and vibration motor. Back to the right side of the fold, I can remove the secondary board. Once the required flex cables are detached, it just lifts out. The last component left to remove is the battery. With this phone, there are two, and both are glued in beyond belief. So it's time for some alcohol to help soften the adhesive. Then using a suction cup and some prying tools, it can come free. There is very little space around the battery, which makes it hard to pry out. It also questions why Samsung would ever need so much adhesive. After all, the whole phone is sandwiched together. So you don't need very much at all. The second battery is much thinner than the first but it's secured with more adhesive, so it's likely to bend on removal. I'd usually use a heat mat to aid a battery's removal. However, without a front screen, there isn't really anything for the heat to transfer through. So I just stuck to using alcohol and some prying tools. Both cells provide the phone with a total capacity of 4,400 milliamp hours. With that, we've completely disassembled the Galaxy Fold 4. It's not too much different on the inside to a normal non-folding Samsung. However, there are a few extra pieces and of course, an extra battery. The issue with foldables isn't so much the difficulty of repair, but the cost of replacement parts. The new display for this Galaxy Fold 4 cost me 775 Australian dollars, or around 515 US dollars. While this one is still a current model, a repair like this might be justified. But as it becomes a year or two old, it quickly becomes uneconomical. I'll unwrap our new display and begin reinstalling the components we removed earlier. Once the second board is installed, I can proceed with attaching the battery. I didn't apply any new adhesive as what remains on the battery is plenty strong enough. I'll attach the lower speaker before inserting the SIM card tray. Proceeding, I'll install the vibration motor and USB-C charge port. The battery is to go in next, and just like the first one, it's going in with its old adhesive. There's a couple of flex cables that need to attach to the charge port before I can attach the retaining piece of plastic on top. It's important to remove the protective film over the camera lens before installing the motherboard. Here we can see the other side to that underscreen camera, visible other pixels of the display. It's now time to get our motherboard back into place. Once it's positioned, it can simply be pressed down into place before being fastened with three Phillips screws. Then all of its flex cables can be reattached. The last internal pieces left to attach are the wireless charging coil for the left side and the upper speaker on the right. Now it's time for a test, but not before we attach the outer screen. Plugging the Galaxy Fold in this time, we see the charging icon on both the external and internal displays. Meaning our no power issue was as I suspected because the phone was not able to detect the internal screen. This is likely done to protect the device during repair or assembly. After a good charge, we can see the phone not only works, but the external display is undamaged. So all that's left to do is properly attach the outer display and back glass. For the rear panel, I'll need to remove all the old adhesive before attaching the new template adhesive I've purchased. Once ready, I can ensure all the internals are clean and free of dust before the back can be attached to the phone. For the front display, things are a bit different. After attaching the plastic retaining bracket for the flex cable, I'll instead use liquid adhesive to secure the display. This is because I was not able to find an adhesive template like I did for the back. This approach is more messy but will secure the display well and prevent any dust or water from entering, just like the original. Once I've applied a solid bead around the perimeter, I can position the screen into place before holding it down with some rubber bands for several hours, allowing for the glue to cure. If you skip this step, the display will not be properly attached and will come free. 
Once dry, the rubber bands can be removed and the excess glue can be scraped away. Once complete, I can power up our repaired Galaxy Fold 4 to make sure it's still working and reset the phone to factory settings. And with that, we're done. So this is it, a repaired Galaxy Fold 4, with costs totaling 960 Aussie dollars or around 640 US, this has proven quite a discount over a new Galaxy Fold 4. The screen is of course the most expensive part of most phones, but especially foldables. Samsung's repair price is only about $50 more than what it was to repair it myself. Factoring in labor costs, if you have the latest model, it's just best to take it to Samsung. Because if I had to damage the outer screen, the total cost would have worked out higher. But I'm happy with the outcome of this phone. The included case features the additional S Pen or kickstand, depending on what you fit to it. The new display is a genuine Samsung panel, so works perfectly with the S Pen. With that, we've successfully saved this Galaxy Fold 4. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.